those of you that know me know that I believe it doesn't take all day to say all what right. you got to say. All right, amen. Plus, I, I asked God this morning if I could keep an appointment at 4 o'clock with the Pittsburgh Steelers. <laughs> <laughs> amen. 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 And, I, and I believe God is going to let me keep that appointment. Amen. 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 If you would turn in your Bible, sir, to the book of Numbers, chapter 11. We're going to start reading at verse 11. And let's go back to verse 10. Moses heard all the families standing in the doorways of their tents whining. And the Lord became extremely angry. Moses was also very aggravated. And Moses said to the Lord, Why are you treating me, your servant, so harshly? Have mercy on me. What did I do to deserve the burden of all these people? Did I give birth to them? Did I bring them into the world? Why did you tell me to carry them in my arms like a mother carries a nursing baby? How can I carry them to the land you swore to give their ancestors? Where am I supposed to greet where am I supposed to get meat for all these people? They keep whining to me, saying, give us meat to eat. I can't carry all these people by myself. The load is far too heavy. If this is how you intend to treat me, just go ahead and kill me. Do me a favor and spare me this misery. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for your grace and your mercy. We thank you, Lord, for this journey we are about to embark on. We pray, Father God, that you would now prepare the people to hear your word. And I ask, Father God, that you allow me to step back so that you may step forward, that your people might be edified, that you might be glorified. I pray, Lord, that your word today will be simple enough for a child to understand and have enough content for the adults to take and help them in their daily walk yes. in this Christian walk. Father God, we bind up anything that might come against you and your word. We bind it up in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Lord, for loosening your anointing in this place. We pray, Lord, that you would do what you do best, and that's remove the burden and destroy the yoke. But most of all, Father God, we pray that if there's anyone among us today that does not know Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior, that something will be said today that will cause them to come running, asking the question, what must I do to be saved? Is it, is, it is in the mighty and matchless name of your Son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 About three or four months ago, <coughs> on my job, we started laying off people. And during this time of, of, of laying off, our branch began to grow. And as you know, growth is good, mm -hmm. but when you don't have enough people to handle the growth, well, it can cause some problems. Mm -hmm. right. Amen? Amen. 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 So, as the months went by, I noticed that the people that I worked with began to complain. They began to whine because we were working long hours and doubling up the load and we weren't getting any extra pay. No extra time off. But a job <coughs> had to be done. That's right. Amen? All right. Yes. Well, about three weeks ago, I was sitting in the room with some of my fellow co-workers, and one of the guys walked in, and he began to complain. And as I sat there, I noticed when he stopped complaining, everybody else took a turn and started complaining and whining about everything. But more importantly, I realized that I, too, had joined in with all the wine. All right, come on. Amen? All right. Amen. 
So the next day, the Lord had to deal with me, and he showed me myself. And I quickly came back to the plant, and I got the, the people that were there. I gathered them together, and I called a meeting. And I told them, I said, you know what? I got to apologize because I'm supposed to be your leader. Uh -huh. And I find myself whining just, mu just as much as you are. Right. Amen? Mm -hmm. And I say, as a leader, I should be setting the tone and setting That's right. the example. That's right. I should be encouraging you instead of whining with you. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen. So I told them from this point on, whenever we hear someone begin to whine, stop. Mm -hmm. Start speaking some positive things into this branch. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? Because it's a good branch. And we're growing and growing every day. Amen? Amen? This whining was the catalyst for today's message. All right. So I want to preach to you for the subject Stop mm -hmm. Whining. All right. Amen? Amen? Stop Whining. All right. Amen? The dictionary defines whining as a feeble or peevish complaint. A complaint uttered in a plaintive tone or to complain or protest in a childish or undignified manner. Well. Philippians 2 and 14 tells us to do all things without murmuring, without whining and disputing. Amen? In other words, stop grumbling and arguing. Stop fussing and fighting. Stop complaining, pointing fingers, and whining. Do I have any whiners in the house? Well. Husbands, well. husbands, don't look at your wives. Wives, don't look at your husbands. And parents, don't look at your children. Well. Amen. Because the truth be told, we all have whined and complained That's right. to somebody That's right. about Amen. something. That's right. Amen. 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 We whine about our jobs. We whine about our spouse. We whine about our children. We whine because we won't do, we don't have this or that. We whine because we want to have a house that we can't get. We whine because we're not making enough money. We whine when we can't get our way. We whine when somebody won't do what we want them to do. When God won't do it like we want him to do it, we whine and whine and whine. But remember, we just found out that whining is a sin. So the question today is, why do we whine and what do we do to combat it in 2012? All right, friend. Amen? Amen. So when we look at this 11th chapter of Numbers, we find the Israelites have been wandering in the wilderness for a little over two years. Uh -huh. Now, when the Israelites left Egypt, they thought they would be living in the land of milk and honey. Yeah. But they find themselves, themselves still wandering around in the wilderness with no milk, and no honey. All right. And no end in sight, and they begin to whine and complain. All right. They whined so much that the Lord got angry and started a fire that consumed some of the people. Amen? All right. It's bad enough when two or three people are complaining, but can you imagine thousands and thousands of people complaining all at the same time? Amen. The Israelites are whining because they have not progressed. Mm -hmm. They have not reached their destination in the time frame that they expected. That's right. mm -hmm. So they whine about their circumstance. Mm -hmm. The reason they were still in the wilderness was because of choices they had made. All right. They were still there because of their disobedience. So they were whining about a situation they had the power uh -huh. All right, all right. Amen, somebody. That's right. Point number one. Don't whine about the situations you have the power to change. So what are you whining about today? Do you have the power to change it? 
So many times we look at our lives and whine and complain because we haven't progressed beyond a certain point. We whine when we get passed over for promotions, uh -huh. when our marriages are stagnant and boring, uh -huh. or when we find ourselves overweight and out of shape. <laughs> Amen, somebody. Amen. I know I'm not going to. All right. right. <laughs> but ask yourselves, yes. was I as assertive on the job as I needed to be? All right. Was I on time? Did I make myself more valuable to the company? Well, or did I just do enough mm -hmm. to get yes, by? Get by. Mm -hmm. yes. Did I have the power to change my circumstances? All right. We whine when our marriage isn't hot and spicy anymore, mm -hmm. and the thrill is gone. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. All right. But ask yourself the question: What have you done to get the thrill back? All right, well, preacher. What kind of spice are you adding to your marriage? Have you set up a picnic in the middle of the floor? Mm -hmm. Have you slipped an unexpected yeah. love note in your spouse's yeah, right. pocket? Well, Have you planned a romantic evening, or do you do the same old, same old? Mm -hmm. Do you have the power to change your situation? We whine because we're out of shape. But do you exercise and eat the right thing, or do you just lay around and have that second or third healthy, healthy. Right. amen, right. and decide to worry about that later? Right. Amen. 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 In this situation, you have the power to change what you're whining about. That's right. Amen. So don't whine about your circumstances mm -hmm. that you may have the power to change. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Now, as we look at verse 4 through 9, we find the Israelites whining about food. The Living Translation says they told Moses, Moses, we remember the time we were able to eat fish back in Egypt for free. Come on. We had all the cucumbers and melons and leeks and onions and all the garlic we wanted. Yes, yes. But now our appetites are gone. Mm -hmm. All we ever see is this man. Uh -huh. My, my, my. Well, what they said was, we might have been slaves. Y'all need to catch this one. All right. We might have been slaves, but we sure ate well. <laughs> Amen. The Israelites were in bondage. But because their flesh got what it wanted, Come on. Yes. they didn't whine or complain. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. But soon as they were set free mm -hmm. and their flesh wasn't satisfied, mm -hmm. they began to whine and complain. Amen? Amen. Amen. So even though the Israelites were free, mm -hmm. because their flesh had control, they took themselves all the way back to Egypt uh -huh. That's right. and put themselves right back in bondage. Uh -huh. yes. Amen. Yes. Yes. Amen. And as, as I was reading the scripture and they were talking about me, and it, it made me remember something about my mom and dad. So I'm going to share this real quick. <laughs> back in 86, me and my wife had just got married, and we were having my parents out to dinner for the very first time. And my wife, she's not a, a meat person. So the meal she prepared that day was pretty much vegetables. <laughs> Amen? So my mama made the statement, James, is this all day? <laughs> <laughs> and my dad replied, where's the meat? <laughs> Amen, somebody. Amen. <laughs> so the Israelites had asked God for food but complain about the kind of food he sent. Mm -hmm. All right. In other words, they prayed to God, then whined about how he chose to answer their prayers. Right. Point number two. Mm -hmm. Don't whine about how God chooses mm -hmm. to answer your prayer. God is omniscient, yes. which means he knows everything. He knows the best way to do everything, mm -hmm. even how to answer your prayers. Mm -hmm. God had a purpose for sending manna instead of sending something else. 